Hello and welcome to coverage of the Worcester Manor League Cube Draft event held on the 14th of June 2014, brought to you by netrunners.co.uk. Uh, we are going to bring you coverage first of all of the Corp side draft. Uh, we have a pod of I think about six or seven people here, uh, there might be six I think, and just to give you an idea in terms of how this uh, cube is actually comprised, effectively it is uh, one core set, uh, one of every uh, Genesis pack, creation and control, one of every spin cycle pack, and also uh, honor and profit. So you can expect to see, well, you can know what you can expect to see from there. So I'm just going to go through and show you what we've got so far. So we've seen a, a restructure, we've seen a future perfect there, we've also seen a breaking news, uh, a wall of thorns, a hill of hands, uh, which I'm very seriously completing drafting there. It obviously works as good economy, if I can uh, pick that early. And there's restructure is also another potentially good pick. The Future Perfect would be a great replacement for the uh, Priority of Wreck. For those of you unfamiliar with Draft, uh, you have to draft a minimum of 30 cards with 14 agenda points, so I'll be looking to play 34 cards here and try and reduce my agenda density as much as I can. I'm going to draft there the Hill of Hands first of all and reward myself with a uh, Biscuit M&M. Which a crispy M and M, which is the thing to do. So I've got a Viper there. I've got a Beanstalk royalties, two good cards there. Uh, a pop-up window, which I'm also very tempted to pick. Uh, aggressive secretary, which could be good if I'm going always advanced. But uh, immediately there, my my first three picks, or my first choices would would be probably what you have in hand there. Economy and ice are going to be key, absolutely essential. And pop-up window does do both. Uh, but Beanstalk would be quite nice. But I'm going to pass the Beanstalk. And uh, take the pop-up window. And I'm going to shake the camera a little bit for good measure. And take another crispy M&M. &M. Joy of joys. It was a relatively well attended event. We had, um, I think, uh, around about... Oh, crumbs, I can't remember now. I think it must have been about 12, 14 people, which wasn't, you know, not too bad at all for uh, for a draft event. And it was incredibly well run uh, over by the folks over at, uh, at Manalik. I'm now going to hold the cards out of frame so that you can't see them. But I've got a Nisei uh, Mark II there. I've got a Fetal AI. I'm having a quick check to see where I am in conjunction with my camera. Uh, I've got a Reclamation Order, which I'm probably going to use. Anonymous Tip, which I don't really want. Uh, and two pieces of ice that are substandard. So, no immediate choice there. Fetal AI, you know, two net damage, two cost could be worthwhile. Do I really want another five advance one? Nisei could work very well, which is exactly what I'm going to take. Um, but not, not a lot of great choices there, to be truthful. Nothing I, that really sort of cried out at me. You've got a Sherlock there, another restructure, a Project Atlas, a Pup. Uh, punitive Counter-Strike, all sorts of really, really good choices there. Um, I'm probably gravitating towards wanting to take uh, the Atlas or the Pup. The Punitive could work quite well, but I'd have to start building around it. Um, and the Restructure should probably go into my thinking there as well. Um, I take the Atlas there. I'm not sure. Maybe the Restructure would have been a better call, um, having already taken quite a lot of agendas. An Oversight AI could work if I see some big ice. A Cleaners, which I'm not particularly keen on. Not a lot of great cards here, but I will take the Victor 1.0, I think. Uh, it's a decent piece of ice at the end of the day, especially against the Crypsis. Um, you know, you're not going to see too many Yogs on the board. A uh, maximum of two Yogs in the whole of this uh, this tournament. So that's that's fine. I'll take that Victor 1.0. And here's my starting hand again. So, again, no immediately obvious options here. Um, I'm not going net damage, so the Tory Hanzo isn't going to do a great deal of difference. I'm never going to draft a Woodcutter in a million years. I have absolutely no interest in doing that whatsoever. Um, so that leaves... Uh, that card, which I have no idea what it is. Is that a marker? I'm pretty sure that's a marker. Uh, yes, it is. It's a marker. So that's the zero cost code gate, three strength, next piece of ice, gains, end the run after all its subroutines for the remainder of the run. Um, so I'm almost certainly going to take the marker there. And what I'm going to try and do is uh, bulk up my ice density as much as possible and take lots of ice, basically. This is my objective now. Take lots of ice and uh, use cards like marker, substandard cards, but that, that could actually do and could actually make some difference. Got no real interest in the cell portal, uh, I'm not going to lie. Um, the Hawker's Eye Grid's tempting, or Thomas House is tempting. Again, it, it could cause someone to run through a remote and think that it's a priority wreck, which I'm, gonna, I'm almost certainly going to be running here. Um, the Hawker's Eye Grid. It's just a good disincentive to run onto a central, potentially, but I'm going to take the Thomas House and just use it as a means of uh, of bluffing a priority wreck. Uh, cost free, effectively. No great choices here. Uh, I've got a Zed, 
strong box and a big brother I think that is either way that's no cards there that I really want so I'll just take the lesser of three evils and I'm left with pretty much the same but I'll take the Burks Bugs quite happily there um, particularly if I get uh, a few more markers or anything like that which I think is likely um, the Burks Bugs is actually an alright card you know and I was surprised to see it that late I got a sentinel defense last uh, but the Burks Bugs is actually halfway sensible it's you know a zero to res and although it's a trace zero um, you know, it can cause some really early good face checking. I'm seeing another. So, uh, so uh, sorry, no, that's my. Uh, that's what I've drafted just to go through and show you. Um, just for those of you that aren't sure. So, uh, nothing too exciting, but we're going to move on to the next pack. Uh, so, I've got a Sarugi there, a Bastion, which I'll immediately put into the front because that'll be good. Uh, a Data Pike, which would also be good. An Eve campaign, providing much needed economy. A Grindle Refinery, uh, which could be again good at using to fake out the priority wreck and get some extra cash out of it. Um, I'm not, I haven't drafted any traps though, so I'm not sure how useful that'll be at this stage. If I drafted that aggressive secretary, I saw I may be tempted. Um, so I think it's probably going to be a choice here between the Data Pike and the Bastion. Um, both are good cards, and I think I'm going to go with the Bastion in the end. Maybe a mistake. I probably should have gone with the uh, the data pike there. It could have probably done more good. Successful demonstration. Uh, a neural katana, which would be strong. Um, a hunter, which you know is is a good piece of ice. A blue level clearance, which is good economy as well as good draw. I'm not sure how much draw I really want in the deck. Um, you run a lot of risks with draw, uh, and you run you run the risk of agenda filling yourself far far too much and uh, I'd say the blue level clearance is one I'd be tempted by as you can see I'm moving to the front of the pile um, but at the same time it's a big risk and I think I'm going to go here for the uh, Neural Katana just for those uh, early face checks and hopefully do some serious damage if I do see a snare or, or something of that ilk that could uh, do some fantastic work or even a Hokusai Grid uh, which I have passed on but uh, maybe I'll see a couple more who knows so I'll pass those across um, House Ecology, I'm always tempted by. It's a good way. I've already drafted a 3-2 and a 3-1, so I could get some use. There's two of them there. Rear Valley, I'm not going to use. Um, not a great hand, this. Character Assassination, not really that tempted by. Um, yeah, there's there's not really a huge amount here that would tempt me. Another Cell Portal, a Matrix Analyzer, which again isn't going to do a huge amount of work. So I think I'm just going to take a Hassle Ecology here, and again, use it as a means to bluff the priority requisition score. Um, there's nothing else here really that particularly grabs me. The character assassination is a tempting one. Um, you know, everyone's going to be playing Armitage Code Bustings, and I, I could have the opportunity of popping a, a fully loaded Armitage, or at least with six or so left on it, which wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be bad at all. And again, some of these cards you just kind of have to look at and go, what on earth was that again? I can't even remember. It's been that long since I've seen it. So an off-the-grid there, immediately tempted by the off-the-grid. Another Burks Bugs, a mid-season replacement. I've got no tag punishment at the moment, though, so I'm not overly enthused about that. A Hudson, which isn't going to do a huge amount here. Multi-access is going to be in relatively short supply. Um, you know, People will have multi-access, but they're not going to have a huge amount of it. So the Burks Bugs is once more, once again tempting. Because again, I think it's a solid card. Um, people are going to run poor in this. The off the grid is also tempting because it's a great opportunity. You know, you can't really make too many runs in draft. Um, you know, if you're using Crypsis as your main breaker, or even if you're not, you haven't got ideal economy, you haven't got ideal breakers, and so therefore everything's expensive um, and slow. And so off the grid suddenly does great work. It may be six to res, but uh, if you can get it in a remote, you know they're not going to get into that remote that turn, and it's a good opportunity to score out that uh, that three pointer you may need. So there's now a glass there. There's a power shutdown, a snowflake, another off the grid. Um, just people are being passing around a panic button. And I keep trying to have to keep trying to remember to uh, put these in frame for you guys. I apologise when my meathead gets in the way every other time. It'd be probably all the chocolate they eat, to be fair, as you can see from the bottom right-hand corner. It's, uh, it's a good supply, well supplied. Uh, power shutdown isn't overly tempting because, again, everyone's going to be running relatively inefficient and expensive breakers, particularly Crypsis. I'm going to take the Hourglass, which I think is probably a mistake here. I think there were better options, but uh, 
you know, I'd, power shutdown isn't that useful when you know you're not going to be seeing many corroders, you're not going to be seeing many data suckers. What you're going to be seeing a lot of is Crypsis, uh, AI breakers, things that are as efficient as possible but that are slow and expensive. Um, and as a result, power shutdown is not going to do a great deal of good there. Woodcut is awful, anonymous tip, not great. Snowflake is at least a piece of ice that is playable and usable, even if it's somewhat expensive, so I'll take it. And uh, thank my lucky stars. Again here, not great options. Uh, Benice May is a tempting one, it's kind of a win-win scenario. I can pile the tags on and hope for a little bit of tag punishment to come my way. Maybe a closed accounts or a, uh, a scorched, maybe. I, I doubt I'll see it, but you never know. I'm going to take the hunter though again, just because it's another piece of ice, and it will, uh, at the very least, dissuade people from uh, from running on a on a server. All about making sure I've got a good ice count here. That is my priority one, though I'm very aware now at this stage that my economy is uh, is low. Um, I need to start looking to find some economy cards, and I'm not going to get any love there, but I'll probably take the character assassination, because the other two cards are useless. And, you know, at the very least, it's uh, another agenda I can use to replace a priority wreck with. I don't really want to be running more than two priority wrecks, but at the same time, I don't particularly want to be increasing my agenda density too much. And... Uh, I probably have already done that, to be fair. Uh, we did agree, incidentally, beforehand that uh, we were all happy checking cards as we went. I know the rules say that you shouldn't, but we were all happy with that. I'm left with uh, two rubbish options, neither of which I have probably any intention of using in my actual deck, um, but I suspect I'll take the Helian one here. Yeah, Hudson isn't going to do a huge amount of work, and I'm not going to bother resing it. And I'm left with an off-the-grid, um, which I'm very happy with. Because I think off the grid is uh, is a sensible card, even if it's expensive to res, it can uh, do some pretty good work. So uh, I'm happy with that. So this is what I'm left with at the uh, halfway point. Uh, my focus has gone a little bit uh, wonky there, so uh, sorry about that. Hopefully it'll kick back in. I've left it on auto focus because I'm aware I'm going to be moving around. I'm going to be nimming with my leg repetitively. But uh, overall, I'm not unhappy with that. It's uh, especially not leaving left with a off the grid. So immediately, I see a hostile takeover there. My uh, the first card, and uh, that's got to be uh, almost immediate pick there. I see another off the grid. So I don't know how well these have been shuffled. A uh, Mushin no Shin, um, but the hostile takeover is is an easy pick there. It's an, it's it's economy as a guard there, which is also a tempting card to play. You're not going to expect to see many bypass effect, but at the end of the day, it's a 4-2 when the run. Um, and a private contract, which will be economy. So, But I'm going to take the hostile takeover. I don't think that's a, a difficult choice to make. And I'm quite happy with that. Uh, so I'm seeing a Baltic, a Kumainu, another Hourglass of Yugura, a Paper Wall, a Shinobi, an Entanglement. Um, I have uh, Paper Wall to the front, but I think I realised quickly that actually Paper Wall isn't going to do that much good in a draft event when a lot of people are packing and running Crypsis. Paper Wall is not the card you want. Um, the Kamainu here probably would be my pick now, but I think I'm going to take the Entanglement. Um, in retrospect, I think the Kamainu here is probably the better play. Um, Yugura, again, not great. Oh, don't tell me I'll take the Hourglass, that'd be horrendous. Really? Oh, I've taken the Hourglass, that's that's definitely not the card I would, I would pick now. It's funny what you look back at and uh, and realise, yeah, that's... Well, any PD contract, that's that's very tempting. Another marker, a Heimdall. Um, some great cards there. And even the Cerebral Overrider could do some good work. The Corporate Shuffle, though, is, is very tempting for me. Uh, purely and simply because it can act as a bit of a, a Jackson Howard event. Um, I can get rid of a, a heavily agenda flooded hand and put it back into R&D. Um, the NAPD is, is the other card that I'm very, very tempted by because I've got a Wotan there as well. But uh, the NAPD and the Corporate Shuffle are the two cards I'm tempted by. The Heimdall is a, another one that's tempting. I've got quite a lot of ice already, but I've got no top-end ice, but I'm going to take the Corporate Shuffle just as a means to try and reduce the, the possibility of Agenda Flood. And I see some interesting cards here, and Interns, uh, a False Lead, a Trick of Light, a uh, Hokusai Grid, a Paper Wall, which I'm not interested in. Um, the False Lead here, uh, I think I take the False Lead, but I think I, at this point I'll have a look and see what I've what I've drafted agenda wise because 
I need to figure out how many priority wrecks I need to put in my deck. And if I'm one point shy, I might as well put in take the false lead. Um, and that way I don't have to draft any more agendas. But it's not a great hand. I mean, the Hokusite Grid, I think, is probably the only other tempting card here. Interns isn't going to do a great deal of good for me. So I, I think those are the two I'm considering here. The Trick of Light yeah, potentially could be decent. Um, I don't think I've drafted any Advanced Ice at this stage. So I think I'm going to take the Hokusite Grid there. Oh, I can't decide. Yeah, no, I'm taking the Hokusai Grid. I thought I could have sworn I took in False Lead, but uh, I think that's probably the right decision. Um, a Cleaners. Diversified Portfolio. And a Sensei, I think that is. Um, which, again, isn't a card I'd ever use in Constructed by any stretch of the imagination. But in Draft, it's actually not too bad. Um... If I can find the pack for it. So it adds an end of the run event uh, to every piece of ice encountered. Um, it's a 3-5 code gate, so you know, it's not it's not too shabby. Anyway, so I've seen some interesting cards here. Another off the grid, a um, Edge of World, which I've got, I've got a good ice density, could be tempting. Encryption Protocol, I don't really have any. So I'm going to take the Edge of World. Again, it's just a bluff. Um, I think I may have probably taken another off the grid there, but uh, there were some there were some decent cards. A hive, uh, another entanglement, which is made all the way around. Uh, paper one character assassination. So again, I'm not tempted by the paper wall, um, but there's some good cards there. And I think again, not not a bad hand to be left with. Uh, swarm, sorry, not hive. Um, swarm, you know, is advanceable. Um, and it, it's uh, at the end of the day, it is an 8-5 century. You do have to take a bad pub, but you can make an incredibly taxing piece of ice for them to get through. So it really depends there. I'm going to take it because I need some more ice, and it's a good top-end one. Um, causing a bit of a backlog here. So another marker, which I'm pretty sure I'm going to take there without second thought, because... Marker, I tell you what, does some fantastic work for me in these games, and uh, I do not regret drafting them in, this, in the least. I'm left with a false lead, which I'll take, because I, I can, so I was quite happy to see that pass to me, because that was the other card I was considering. Um, I've drafted a lot of agendas here, and I'm, I'm in danger of uh, increasing my agenda density far too significantly, and I'm left with a chairman hero, which will not go in my deck. But, uh, you know, that's fine. That wasn't a too bad a session. I got some good cards, but I'm still very much lacking on economy. And here on the last pack, I'm seeing a uh, Adonis campaign, which is tempting. A uh, medical research... No, what is it called? Um, medical, uh, yeah, research clinic. What is it? Medical clinic. Which is another tempting card to take. Um... It's between those. It's really between the, those two. The Adonis and the clinic. Um, I think I go with the Adonis because it's going to provide me with better short-term money and you know I just think the mental health clinic is going to get trashed very quickly. I'm probably going to protect my Adonis with that question. I don't know, it's a tough one. I'm, I'm still not sure which one is the best option. I know I take the Adonis here um, but I'm not sure which option would have been best. But uh, there we go. So I've got seen another pop-up window which is very tempting. Another Chimera, a subliminal messaging. Some really good cards in this set. Um, you know, the pop-up window I would love to take. Uh, the Chimera I'd love to take and the subliminal I'd love to take. So those are the three cards that I'm debating here. Subliminal I think is going to be very strong because people aren't going to be making lots of frequent runs and uh, there's going to be some good windows to use subliminal messaging so I'm going to take the subliminal and pass but I would have loved to have taken a pop-up window as well. Uh, Shadow, which is another good card to take. Um, nothing else really that jumps out there. So, the, you know, the Shadow is a, is a really good option. That's why it's going straight to the front. It's advanceable as well, so... You know, there's stuff to do with it. Ghost Branch, again, I've got no Tag Punishment. I think it's, it should be a fairly... Oh, I've got a TMI there. Maybe oh, I'm taking the TMI, okay. That's... Uh, that's a surprise. It's a surprise. I think, again, I probably wouldn't have done that in retrospect, but uh, 
Yeah, TMI's not a bad shout. Another Hill of Hands. Um, Isabel Maguire. Director House. No, I've got no interest in putting additional ones in. Um, and that police, which I think I'm just reading because I can't remember what it does. I don't think there's a huge amount. I mean, the punitive is is really the other option. I think uh, it's between a hill of hands and a punitive, and I'm going to take the hill of hands because it's economy, and this is exactly what my deck is lacking at the moment. The government contracts is another tempting card, but there is a marked count there, um, which I almost certainly will take because again, it's good drip economy. It's fire up to trash. No one's going to trash the thing, and it just means that I can uh, make some money, and I need to make some money here. So. Uh, it was a choice between the government contracts and the uh, the marked accounts, and I take the marked accounts because that's what I need. I need some cash. And there we go. Choice made. So again, nothing too tempting here. Ghost Branch not interested. Uh, Curse my <laughs> the Tokyo Grid one, yeah Neo Tokyo Grid. So that each time an advancement token is placed on a card in the server, each turn gain one. Um, it's okay. I think I make the mistake here. I think I should have taken the Chimera, but I, I don't know. The problem with the Chimera is again you're expecting everyone to be running Crypsis, and Chimera ain't gonna do diddly squat against Crypsis. So I'm left here with nothing decent in hand. So uh, I'll just again take the uh, the lesser of two evils. Or three, four evils, however many were. The dedicated response team. Um, I'm left with more rubbish. I'll, I'll take whatever. I have no intention of playing that. But uh, oops, I think I forget. And here's the, the dregs, really. But I feel like I've got a functioning deck. Uh, it is economy light. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, I'm left with, yeah, nothing decent. So whatever, really. Net police, which again I'm just looking at to check and see. I wish I could see if I had any link, but I don't, so it's really not worth it. <laughs> but then, whenever is it in the last two cards? I still can't believe I've got passing off the grid, to be honest. I still think it's a great card in draft. And that's what I'm left with a Grey Labyrinth, um, which again I'm probably not going to use. But I've drafted a fair amount of ice, I've drafted a fair amount of, uh, of agendas, I'm lacking on the economy, but overall I'm not unhappy here with my corp draft. I feel like I have maybe increased my agenda density a little bit too much, um, which is a problem, but at the very least I only have to run two priority wrecks. Um, my ice density is decent, I think I actually run, end up running with about 14 pieces of ice, uh, which is huge for a 34 card deck. So uh, I'm feeling quietly confident in my... Uh, in my corp deck. Um, I'm obviously going to drop a lot, but uh, economy wise it's okay, ice wise it's okay, agenda wise it's okay, it's certainly a functioning deck. So, with that, uh, we finish up our, our corp draft and move on to our runner draft. Um, it'll be uploading soon, so please join us there.